Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Armored Warfare. This is Tanks for the Mammaries and today we're going to be taking a look at the M1134 anti-tank guided missile uh, TD here, the M1134. This is um, a vehicle based on the Stryker chassis, uh, American armored personnel carrier and the version here that you see is in the game now. Uh, if you go to dealers and you go to Wolfie, it is down here at tier 7. It's a premium vehicle that you can get. Um, you can see that the, uh, the statistics, the damage is 567 shape charge, penetration is 940 millimeters. Damage per minute is 4,500. Reload time is 13 seconds. Comes with 1,660 hit points. The max speed is 105.84 kilometers an hour. It does have pretty good camouflage. Uh, decent view range at 437. So this, um, its wait time is sort of like aim time. It's when you are sitting still and the uh, weapon system zeroes in to be able to allow you to fire the missile target. So. The 1134 um, is a premium vehicle that can be purchased at Tier 7. And, uh, you know, I it's what Armored Warfare, what Obsidian is saying is that they found that the Swing Fire was a very popular vehicle. And um, the Swing Fire... Where is that little bad boy? The Swing Fire is here at Tier 4. It's after the XM800 you get to the swing fire and uh, it's it's also sort of an armored personnel carrier that's got a missile system on it uh, as you can tell I have not yet gotten to the swing fire um, I, I went right over it to the Fox with um, with uh, unlocked reputation because I just I saw people playing it and it just looks so painful that I thought to myself I'm not gonna do it so um, I did however end up getting this uh, this vehicle in my garage and it's it's got a, a double tow missile system similar to what you find on the uh, M2 Bradley uh, it has smoke grenades with it it's um, comes with a total of 30 missiles which is basically 15 reloads and the the reload, the, the firing time between each is about two seconds. Um, so you can get about 1,080 average damage, uh, or, or get about 1,080 damage on a salvo of missiles. And the reload time between, once you fire both, the reload time is 14 seconds. So this is certainly not a vehicle that you want to be mixing it up with uh, in, in, a, in a brawl in close range. It just is something that you want to be sitting back. Yeah, it's got a decent number of hit points but it's got essentially no armor whatsoever it's just got it's got some reactive armor in the front for uh, heat and things like that but it will get penetrated fairly easily so the idea is to play this like a TD although it's a weird TD because it actually comes with uh, the ability to use some of the scout functions so you you um, it's a hybrid TD armored fighting vehicle uh, concept here and you can use it to designate targets. Uh, it gets some of the functionality that the scout vehicles get, but it is considered to be a TD. So um, the commander that I put in this vehicle is this guy from Syria. His name is uh, Rashid Al-Atasi. And the reason I put him in there, even though he's not all the way up uh, in experience yet, is because he does have specialization in using anti-tank guided missiles. So I went ahead and uh, put him in there so that he would be able to build up his experience and use him on other anti-tank guided missile vehicles as well. The crew that I have in here um, is also, it's a from scratch crew, so I've just started getting them up in their experience. I went ahead and got the off-road driving for uh, my driver because I want to make sure that this vehicle being fragile and having to stay away from gunfights needs to be able to move pretty quickly in all sorts of terrain so I went with the off-road driving for the uh, gunner I went to quick draw to be able to improve my aim speed a little bit I'm not sure how well that works um, 
from the standpoint of, of the fact that you're it's a wire guided missile that you are guiding to the target by keeping your mouse over the target but you know that's in there and then uh, secured ammunition to make sure the ammo rack was secured so those are the first skills that I got for this it comes with one type of ammo which is the BGM 71 E tow missile system to launch optically uh, guided uh, optically wire guided missile um, for consumables, my standard loadout with the repair kit, the first aid kit, the fire extinguisher, and the uh, PVE field maintenance kit. For retrofits, um, I went with intercom system to uh, in the universal slot to make sure my crew had the additional 5% bonus. I went with experimental propellant to see if I could get um, more damage per tow round. I went with maximum speed increase using the improved filter systems to make the vehicle go faster than its uh, highest stock version engine and I went with augmented optics to give additional view range to the vehicle because this thing is supposed to sit fairly far back and uh, fire on targets at quite a distance so that was why I chose those feel free to leave comments uh, at the end of this video below the video if you're interested in talking about that or if you've got a better suggestion I'm happy to hear it but that's sort of what I went with right now for uh, my loadout so that's that. I haven't put camouflage on this. I don't know if I'm going to keep this vehicle yet. So um, I, I did enjoy it. I, I think there are, certain, there are certain battlefields where this works very, very well. There are others where it does not. And I will show you one of the battles I got into. Let's go ahead and just take a look at that. One of the battles that I got into with this bad boy right here um, today was <coughs> Cerberus. And this was a this was a pretty darn good fight so let's go ahead and just jump into that and I'll explain what uh, what I like about this vehicle in this particular fight and why I think that it works on certain battlefields very very well as you guys are probably aware if you've watched one of my other videos on this particular map when I did a map review of it uh, I showed you a spot to get into that really allows you to rack up the damage and I'm going to use that same spot today in this vehicle. I used it with the um, expeditionary tank uh, as well as the uh, Terminator. But in this particular fight, it works. I found out it works for this uh, tow missile carrier as well. So as we are getting ready for the match to start here, this map, as you recall, is um, where you're going to have to go down the railroad tracks from the opposite end. Uh, that you normally play on this map and basically from the G5 down to the A54 line and along the way you're going to be uh, trying to destroy some arm shipments that are on the train so I went ahead and killed that guy got a good strike on him and now I'm making my way forward to try and get to the spot that I wanted to get to It's got enough power to get over the rocks, I'll tell you that. Um, so I was tr debating whether or not this guy was going to be able to hit me as I went across to my spot here, but he's not hes not where he used to be, backed up a little bit. So here I am behind the rocks, and now I've got a great view of all of these vehicles that are going to be coming out here. There's one good hit on the guy. Now I'm reloading. That's the other thing you got to keep, keep paying attention to is your reload time is you know right at 14 seconds so when you're gonna fire you need to then back off and uh, make sure you're not in shooting ability or shooting range of the uh, the enemy so as you can see this uh, this keeps my the body of my vehicle pretty well covered and uh, I'm just able to lay out a whole bunch of attacks on those guys without any sort of retribution from them And this spot allows you to pull out, fire, pull back, reload, pull out, fire, pull back, reload. And uh, it's just wide open, fish in a barrel. I, I'm surprised, though, here at Tier 7 that I haven't had uh, more of the vehicles actually defeat the, um, the armor. I'm not going to have a chance to get the Paladin, even though I, I wanted to put a shot in on him. 
But here you go. I mean, I just... The first one was defeated. That The second one was not defeated. The first round was defeated by the armor system on that BMP-3. Now, I'm wondering if that guy's going to try and swing, out, swing around and get me. It doesn't appear that he's going to. And uh, the T-80 decided to show up and cause him some trouble, so I don't have to necessarily worry about that guy anymore. But here I am re as reloading. And you can see, still a lot of enemy tanks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven enemy tanks on the engagement area where I am right now. Reloading. Try and get a shot in on this guy. There we go. Now this T-80, Dr. Zhivago here, is going to be screwing around with these guys um, for a bit. And rather than get down there where he is, I'm going to I'm gonna stay back. I thought about trying to go up there and help him, but he seems to be holding on to his health just fine. And I was hoping he would back off so those guys would pull out and I could put some shots into him. Keep an eye on the map. We seem to be okay on the other side. But I'm starting to think that we're going to have to, in the near future here, start making some moves on the secondaries. And here comes Bradley, so I'll be able to put a good shot into this guy. And there he goes. Now at this point I think to myself, yeah, I probably ought to get out there and take a shot at that M1A1 Abrams. Because this, as much as Zavago has been firing, he really hasn't done a lot to kill these guys. So, and I figured this guy's probably distracted enough; he's not going to shoot me. But he was taken out before I could get to him. So, as I did before, I'm going to go around the other side of the map through the uh, underneath this bridge here, get around to the other side, and hopefully find a guy or two over here to shoot. While the rest of the team sort of travels up the other way, and lo and behold, there's a stingray. So we'll get a shot into him. The second one, I think, missed or just damaged his tracks. Back off a little bit so that he can't see me anymore. Reload, and there he is. And boom. So I was able to take him out. And as I move up this side of the map... the opportunity to uh, shoot some other guys here. And this is where I've forgotten my reload. I should have reloaded while I was on the way. Because I'm thinking I could get a shot on that bagel panzer and he gets away because I was not reloaded in time. But never fear. Here comes a warrior. And he defeated that round. But he did not defeat that round. So he gets designated. I'll reload and fire again. Pretty good hits on him. 1,300 for two hits. Now at this point, if we take him out, it's the end of the match. So anyway, uh, you know, I do recommend this game or this vehicle. And I think it's certainly uh, on the right map, a very, very good vehicle. You can see I've, my shots were great, did a lot of damage there. And uh, I'll show you the post-game stats after this. We'll take a look at those next. But 11 kills on that map. Uh, pretty pleased with it. So let's take a look at the post-game stats. We'll do a little more talking about this vehicle, whether you should get it or not. Uh, all right. So this wasn't my first uh, battle in this vehicle today. I had done a couple previously. But uh, for this operation, Cerberus here, you can see I did, uh, with the premium account, 3,900 uh, reputation and 145,000 credits, 11 kills, 5 spots, and 11,637 damage. That is with uh, not a fully trained crew. And in the end, you know, out of all the missiles fired, I only missed one. Only missed one. So, again, as accurate as your aim is with the mouse, but a tremendous amount of damage done to all those vehicles. 
again, the right map for it, but I do think this vehicle in the right map with the right crew is an extremely dangerous opponent. So I recommend it. I wasn't sure if I would like it based on the swing fire, but I got to tell you, I did enjoy this and I will continue to play this vehicle. So get yourself one if you want to. This is Tanks of the Memories playing Armored Warfare. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. Have a great day.